What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So, I'm gonna check out when WWE superstars realize their storyline just ended in disappointment by uh, Raw is Danny. Uh, this should be a very interesting one. I'm sure that uh, some of the wrestlers under Vince McMahon's, uh, I guess you could say Vince McMahon's creative decisions, I'm sure they were a few times, maybe even more than a few times, confused on where their storyline where their character was going and vince is one of those type of people especially if you're trying to make a name for yourself early in your career you kind of just go with the flow even if it doesn't make a lick of sense so a lot of times you go with the flow because you you know you want to try to get in his good graces so that way you can at one point get to that situation where you can give a little bit more pushback in your creative direction but you kind of got to play ball so i'm sure there's been a few times wrestlers just were just like all right vince like i know you run things but what was the point of this or oh, this made no sense for my character or anything that i just did here what was the point so we're gonna check this out appreciate all the love and support guys shown on channel Right. Storylines are the most vital part of any WWE programming. Without them, Raw and SmackDown would just consist of random matches being thrown together just to fill up airtime, but a backstory that goes along with the wrestling that includes high stakes, surprises, comedic moments, and of course, a satisfying payoff in the end obviously uh -huh. makes for better television. But what happens when a storyline doesn't include any of this and ends off on a disappointing note, leaving fans with a dull payoff? We're going to take a look at three of those WWE storylines that did just that. In the fall of 2019, Eric Not Rowan, former member egg. of the Wyatt family, began showing up to his matches carrying oh, a cage. No one knew exactly what was inside of this cage. I really want to know what, like, what was his thought process when they came to him talking about you're gonna carry around a cage, and there's gonna be a creature in the cage, and when we finally reveal it, it's gonna be a fake ass spider. Or even before they even came up with the reveal, you're just going to carry around a creature in a cage. I just want to know, did he, was he like, like just super okay? Or did he have some questions about it? I really would love to know. Like if he ever has done an interview talking about that horrible booking decision, whatever that was, uh, y'all send it to me because I definitely want to get his his thought process behind that whole trash situation. But obviously, whatever it was meant a lot to Rowan, just based off the way he spoke to it backstage. Oh, look at that smile, so cute. And how he acted whenever anyone got near it. This mysterious item, or thing, would go on to bite Eric Rowan's hand, attack the local competitors that he was facing during this time, and would even cause Mojo Raleigh to run away in fear once he laid his eyes on it. Fans would speculate online about what could possibly be inside this cage. Some speculated that it may be Rowan's old sheet mask, the one that he war during his time in the white family a doll or even hornswoggle rowan would finally reveal i'm still trying to figure out how a sheep mask would attack people and scare people this was this was doomed to fail this was this was doomed to fail immediately this is some old school wrestling type shit like back in the 80s type shit i expect a gimmick like this to be presented in the 80s because there was a lot of horrible gimmicks back then this fit that time period not in the modern day of of wwe what was this revealed to the viewers what was inside this cage on the march 2nd edition of monday night raw and unfortunately it wasn't the sheet mask it wasn't a doll and sadly it wasn't hornswoggle because yeah. the mystery item that had fans waiting for all these months ended up being a fake mechanical tarantula that you could probably find at your local spirit halloween store and what made this reveal even worse was that it was an extremely anticlimactic one and one that did not fare well with the fans with some tweeting saying in all fairness i feel like no matter no matter what the reveal was for Eric Rowan's cage, it was always going to be disappointing because after all this time, nothing in that cage was going to meet the expectations we built in our own heads. But really, a spider? I had no expectations because I knew it was going to be bullshit. What? What? Where does it make sense? It's different if my man was out here bringing out like a live fucking snake like jake the snake roberts that's different if you're gonna bring out a creature a real creature but we knew the uh, 
feel like Vince had a list of ideas and he eeny meeny miny mowed it and landed on this stupidity. And finally, it's like opening up Christmas presents and getting a pair of socks. Facts. Appearing on the Lewis Nichols show, Eric Groen revealed, just like the fans, he was also a little disappointed in the reveal as well. With the cage, I just- Oh, so there actually is some audio of him giving his thoughts on this. Let's see what he says. I don't expect it to be a, a spider. When they told you, were you kind of a little bit underwhelmed? Uh, plead the fifth. <laughs> wow. The next storyline on our list I involves a WWE fear. superstar who was being built up to become a monster uh, heel. Yeah. Instead, he would accidentally become a monster meme on social media. Yeah. When a WWE superstar is set to make their debut or return, WWE will sometimes begin to air vignettes, which are a series of short cinematic video packages that helps build hype for that superstar. Think of it as a trailer for a movie that's coming out. There have been many vignettes in the past for superstars who have gone on to become stars on the main roster, but there have also been vignettes for superstars who unfortunately don't really go anywhere creatively after the vignettes and the debut occur. An example of this was Veer Mahan. Yep. In October of 2021, WWE aired its first vignette for Mahan. Then they aired another one the next week. Then another one the week after that. And they aired another one the week after that too. And so on and so forth. They would go on to consistently air these vignettes throughout the next five months, which yeah. confused the hell out of WWE fans. Because between the first vignette in October of 2021 to the final one in March 2022, <laughs> WWE had aired almost 20 of these Veer is Coming vignettes without any indications for fans on when he would actually be coming. What was intended to help build anticipation for this monster heel on the main roster ended up making him into a monster meme amongst yeah. wrestling fans instead. But finally, after weeks of anticipation and confusion, <laughs> Veer made his long-awaited arrival on the main roster on the Raw after WrestleMania 38 by attacking the Mysterios uh, after uh, Dominic's match with The Miz. Speaking to Sony Sports, Veer discussed his re-debut on WWE. He said, It feels great. It does not feel like it was me alone who joined Raw, but 1.4 billion Indians, plus the fans around the world who have joined with me. I know we've waited for five to six months, but I think time. the wait was worth it. It was worth it for me. It was worth it for all the fans around the world. But it wouldn't be worth it because although he did end up facing Dominic a couple times and Rey Mysterio once, this storyline he was in with the Mysterios wouldn't really amount to anything else besides this. And Veer soon found himself unfortunately fading away into the sidelines rather quickly. Because uh -huh. besides the matches with the Mysterios, Veer would go on to have a one-off match with Mustafa Ali, face countless local competitors each and every week. And he would also participate in a Money in the Bank qualifying battle royal where he got eliminated in less than two minutes. The Mysterios would go on to feud with the Judgment Day, where fans would eventually witness Dom's heel turn, and as for Veer, he sadly would end up just becoming a victim of a 4th of July barbecue prank, and then head back to NXT yeah. later that same year. Although this story had an unforgettable build for the wrong reasons, it ended with a very forgettable conclusion, just like- Bro, my man was in back in catering. Five and about six months of Veer's coming to Raw, only to end up less than six months later, in fucking catering. Sounds about Vince, bro. With the conclusion of our next storyline on our list, that this began right at Survivor Series 2021. On November 21st, 2021, Whoa, WWE the Survivor Series egg. went live from the Barclays Center in Brooklyn, New York. It was a very special night for the company as the show marked 25 years since The Rock made his WWE debut at the same event in 1996. WWE spent the entire month of November that year celebrating The Rock's career, which would obviously ignite rumors online about yeah. whether or not The Great One would make a special appearance at the premium live event or not. Throughout the Survivor Series broadcast, WWE highlighted memorable moments from The Rock's career and they would also host a battle royal that night titled The Rock's 25th Anniversary 25-Man Battle Royal in honor of the special occasion. This All that. <laughs> it, it, you were essentially damn near promoting The Rock to be there even though he wasn't there type shit. I know they didn't say he was explicitly, explicit, ah, explicitly was going to be there. But with all that hype, with all the promo packages, with all the stuff involving The Rock's career, you would think, anyone would think, he would be there. Despite the rumors and the entire show being built around this huge milestone, The Rock never ended up making an appearance that night. But although he wasn't there physically, he would still make a mark on the show, but in a much different manner. It all started during the Survivor Series kickoff show when Mr. Uh. McMahon arrived to the arena in his limo holding an egg. But it wasn't no ordinary egg. This was one of Cleopatra's egg, the same egg featured in The Rock's brand new movie that was coming out at the time called Red Notice, which just so happened to also be sponsoring the show that night. Former WWE.
It's just that was his that was their way of including the rock. A fucking egg from a damn movie, bro. And then they really turned it into some mini angle. What happened to the damn egg? It's just it was just stupid. WWE superstars Mansoor and Mace, who were both a part of the segment, told a very funny story on their Twitch about their experience filming it. I think it. we may have seen clip. this on Bunch rolls up in his limo, and he comes out of the limo, and we go, yay! And then, in a rare moment of out-of-character Vince, he decides we're going to do two takes because he goes, Damn it! Is that all you got? I'm Vince McMahon! <laughs> Yeah, I, I think know, he wanted us to do a bigger pop when he came out of the he, limo. He wanted the pop for him. So he gets back in the limo and it circles around, comes out of the limo. That's why it was such a huge pop for Vince. That's why you could see uh, Riddick Moss in the background jumping. Oh! The yeah. <laughs> he pulls out the egg, and as we're looking confused, we can see him go. So we go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I um I was tempted by the the egg galore, and you can see me actually in that clip reaching over everyone like it's the one ring. <laughs> slapped my head <laughs> with, your, with your long spindly <laughs> salad fingers. Roman Reigns would pay a visit to the chairman later that night, who explained that the egg was actually a gift from Roman's cousin, The Rock, as a token of appreciation for everything McMahon had done for him over the years in WWE. The egg, however, would then mysteriously go missing later on in the night, and a furious Vince McMahon demanded Sonya Deville and Adam Pearce to find out which WWE superstar stole the egg. 24 hours later, on Monday Night Raw, after still not finding out who committed the theft, Vince McMahon announced that whoever brought him the culprit would get a WWE Championship match with Big E in the main event that same night. Sami Zayn would then tell McMahon that he knew who was responsible for the missing egg, so which WWE superstar ended up being the mystery culprit? It was none other than Austin Theory. Theory would then admit that the reason why he stole the egg in the first place just wanted to come in here yesterday and take a selfie with it in your office. Vince would then surprisingly go back on his promise and give the WWE Championship opportunity to Theory instead of Zayn and told because at this point he was trying to push Austin Theory that was his guy Austin Theory was Vince's guy and it 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 uh, it didn't work then I rate Zayn that he didn't get it because quote he wants a snitch Theory would just go on to lose to Big E in the main event, thus ending what many fans would claim was pointless and an incredible waste of time. But it wasn't as pointless or a waste of time to WWE though, as they received, quote, a very nice payday out of the sponsorship with Netflix, uh, according to Mike Johnson of PW Insider. Uh, and on yeah. the bright side, it looks as though fans got the best possible version of this angle, because according to former WWE writer Brian Gewertz, he revealed in the Bill Simmons podcast that another idea for the storyline that was much worse almost aired instead hold on hold on what 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 was he say brian gewertz he revealed in the bill simmons podcast that a um head writer appeared on wednesday said the original plans plans for the angle were way worse however we wouldn't elaborate on what those plans were another idea for the storyline was much worse almost aired instead that's crazy that there was another angle much worse than that one And these are just a few. There are plenty of storylines that made absolute no sense at all. Like some of the worst storylines you have ever seen. And he only just talked about three of them. Comment down below. Let me know some of the worst storylines you've seen in WWE and AEW or or even in uh, TNA where the storyline itself, the build wasn't really making sense and the payoff was just as worse because there's, oh, there's plenty of them, plenty of them. Comment them down below. Let me know what's the worst one that you've ever seen, in your opinion. You can even go back to WCW. There's plenty of those. Jesus Christ. Appreciate all the love and support you guys shown on the channel. Roll to 150K, and I'm still getting the speed of YouTube Wrestling Champion World. Appreciate y'all kicking in with me. See y'all on the next one. Peace.